somebody who was unable to attend tonight, um, just so everyone knows that that's what's happening. Um, welcome again to the Emerald Team Open House. We're very happy that you were able to join us. Um, wish that we could be in person, but um, since we can't, this is definitely the next best thing. I'm still very nervous. This is my 20th open house, and I still feel like it's my first one sometimes. Um, so just bear with us as we <laughs> kind of get over those nerves of, of presenting to the parents. We um, have really enjoyed the past month with your students. There's a lot of kindness going on, a lot of wonderful things that we're seeing in the classrooms um, with their level of interest and engagement. I think they're happy to be back um, you know, in a slightly more normal, yeah, we can't put them in groups, but I think that they're just um, happy to kind of, I know it's a longer day and that's tough to get used to, but they seem to be happy to be back in school um, regularly. Before we begin, um, I wanna note that the UA teachers are gonna hold a question and answer session. Um, it will be the last 15 to 20 minutes at the end of this presentation. Um, I will put the link to this um, uh, presentation in the chat at the end of this presentation so that you can um, go out to their presentation. This right here is um, the Google Sites. They all have pre-recorded videos that they put on their Google Sites that you can watch um, whenever you have a chance to hear their individual messages, because what they're doing is they're not presenting, they're doing question and answer. And the link to that I will show you will be at the end of the presentation. And again, when the time comes at the end of this, I will go ahead and throw this link in the chat um, so everybody's able to get where they need to be. Um, so welcome to KP Open House. If you're new to Google Meet, um, we have an access to the chat feature down at the bottom there. Um, if you type up your questions, I will stop periodically um, to see, you know, if there's any questions that have kind of come through and then Sally will, or whoever's monitoring the chat will go ahead and, and help me um, answer those or whoever, you know, it's addressed to can, can answer those. Um, to change your view, if you want, you've got those three dots, you can change the layout. Um, so if you want to see more people, um, like right now, all I see is my um, presentation. I don't see any of you because I'm presenting, um, but it's nice to see everybody um, on that screen. It's like the Brady Bunch. And then please keep your mic muted until there's time for questions at the end, which we will leave for you, we promise. Um, just a few key points about Google Classroom. There's a stream tab um, in Google Classroom where we put the homework this year. Not every single homework assignment is an assignment that they submit through Google Classroom. Sometimes it's a, you know, a worksheet based um, assignment that is not in their classwork. So every night, this was me, I put it in at 9.45 for peer editing tomorrow, you need two copies of your essay, you know, the information for homework is put right in the stream every night um, for classes. So they can check there to see what's, you know, what's going on for homework that night. Um, we also have the classwork tab that shows uh, what's going on in class that week or what's due that week. Um, it's organized by topic um, or sometimes by week or unit, depending upon the teacher. And then um, the last thing to help you, know, you and to help your student is we have a to-do list in Google Classroom that they can check to see upcoming things. Um, essays, bigger assignments will be available through, hold on one second, admit, okay. Um, bigger assignments are available through that, um, <laughs> All right, hold on one second. Got it. All right. Um, do that to do list. The other feature right here is their calendar. So bigger assignments, things um, can they can add to that calendar. And then if it's a teacher assigned assignment, it will automatically go to their Google calendar. So those are some features that we have and we use class time and we also use our mindful Mondays when we check PowerSchool and we check our email and we check Google Classroom and we talk about upcoming tests and quizzes and how to study. This is one of the things that we will ask students to pull up during that time or to look at to help them get used to, you know, the organizational piece. Um, I'm going to stop. That's a good point. Are there any questions South Google Classroom related that came through before I move on? No, but it is 639. Okay, beautiful. So if you have any, um, if you want to join your, your child's Google Classroom, just email us and we'll send you an invitation if you're not already in there. Um, this will be in there for you. Our support staff is not in the meet, but if you need to access them, this, this information's in this that will be shared with you when we're done presenting. Um, and obviously our focus this year is yes, the academic piece is super important, but so is our students' emotional well-being. And if there is something that we can do to help you, even if you send us an email that said, we won't ask any questions, like last night was really difficult. Um, we will make sure to get back to you, 
to, to not bring it up to your child, but to make sure that we skip over them or that we say, don't worry about it, get it to me when you can. Um, you know, just because this is a difficult time for everyone and we don't always know, we don't need to know details, but if there's an, a day where we can do something to help you or you want us to be extra careful in how we approach your, your child, um, please just let us know so that we can, you know, do that. We can make sure their emotional well-being um, is being met. Um, we have advisory schedule Monday, Mindful Monday to check power school and check binders, um, get organizational stuff. Talk to me Tuesdays, just getting to know each other questions. Um, Wednesdays, when we rotate um, district-wide lessons for Vision of the Graduate, Social Justice and Social Emotional Learning. Um, theme Thursday, you know, anti-bullying themes, all different, like that's what Thursday um, is this month. And then that rotates monthly. And then Fun Friday, play outside. Um, if it's raining inside or too cold inside, we have a snack and a mask break during that time. Um, if there are no questions, I'm going to jump because it's 641 into my language arts uh, information. Sal, are we good? You're good. Awesome. Thank you, Sally. All You're right. <laughs> so our eighth grade curriculum has the overarching theme of conscience and social consciousness. So it's an aim to promote student self-awareness, um, you know, of where their place is in the world through literature and how they can effect change. And once I made this big, I noticed my pictures are a little off, so I apologize. Um, we have several goals for your child. Um, first and foremost, I want to foster a love of reading. Obviously, that's my number one goal. I have kids all the time say, I don't like to read. And sometimes it is a matter of finding the right book or the right audible. Um, it, we want students to become critical readers, critical thinkers, um, you know, to question things, to use our discussions to question things. We have four primary um, units for the year. The first one is called The Road Taken. It's short stories and poetry um, in an independent um, book talk reading book. Um, then we do a lessons from the past, present, and future where we look at some historical fiction informational text. Then leading into struggles and successes, which is memoir and narrative. That's our Holocaust unit. So if you have any connections to a speaker um, and you'd like to touch base with me, that would be wonderful. We do invite a speaker in every year um, to talk to the students when they're done reading night. Um, in the Boy in the Strike pajamas. Um, identity and society, if I could change the world, we take a look at drama and realistic fiction, the last marking period. Um, and honors differentiation um, is usually through the writing assignments and through the text that they're reading. So it is, um, you know, the curriculum's the same in terms of skills, um, concepts, themes, but the, the texts will be different or the writing assignments will be different um, in order to meet the needs of the different reading levels. Um, some of the major skills that we focus on this year um, for language arts, connotation, very important. It showed a, um, a weakness both in their SBA scores and their star rating scores at the beginning of the year, their baseline scores, that um, students are struggling with making connotations. Um, connotations of words and um, author's purpose was another area, so we'll be focusing a lot on connotation this year. Uh, we want them to develop an interpretation, take a stance. We want them to be able to say that something that we read together, that they didn't enjoy it, but then to be able to explain the effect it had on the reader to make them not enjoy it. It's having an opinion, supporting it with relevant, the best evidence, not just any evidence, but did you comb the text for the best evidence to support that? We do a lot of focus on um, annotating text, literary terms, um, Cornell notes and different note-taking styles. Um, you know, reading is very important and thinking critically is very important. And then for our writing conventions, we do focus on the writing process. We start with a paragraph, then we go to a paragraph with an intro and a conclusion. Then we go to a paragraph with a you know, a four body, you know, four paragraph essay, and then from there they take off. We focus on the structure. We can use outlines or graphic organizers. I always offer both. Um, and really it's elaboration, organization, and fluency where our focus is. And we pick a different focus for each assignment, something we make a writing goal every single time we write a new paper based on the feedback from the last paper. I really want the students to develop their own voice and to really think about their word choice and diction because it matters and it needs to be varied and how to best convey um, what they're thinking and feeling. And that's my writing goal for them. Um, how am I doing on time, Sal? You got one minute. I've got, nope, it just turned to 6.45. I am out of time. Okay. Well, I started you at 6.41, so. Oh, okay. Well, I'm good. I'm going to let the next person go and then I, um, at the end enough. of this, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to share this with everybody. And there's a Google form at the end, getting to know your student with some questions. It's not mandatory, but if there's something that you want us to know that we can do to help you or to help your child or something you want us to know about how special they are or something they've struggled with in the past, 
that form is the place to put that. And again, at the end of the presentation, the link for the UA teachers will be in this presentation. All right, I'm gonna stop presenting and let the next person, um, our Language Live and Reading Horizons, Ms. Liebel is gonna go ahead and give her presentation now. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, again, just like Ms. Kerelasia said, um, you know, I'm really getting to know the students a lot more now that it's beginning of October and um, they really do have that positive energy just coming back and being in the classroom and um, being with each other. Um, you know, they're adjusting very well um, and they're kind of coming out of their shells now. So we're seeing a little bit more of their personality. Um, so I'm going to present. Okay. Okay, so I'm um, Eva Liebel, and I'm an eighth grade resource teacher. Um, I've been teaching at King Philip for about 11 years. Um, it goes by fast, but um, it seems like I've been on the Emerald team, actually, um, much longer than I have. I, um, you're in great hands. Um, but I've been on the Emerald team. This is my second year. Prior to that, I was also on Amethyst team in eighth grade, and then I taught um, seventh grade, but all at King Philip. So, um, you know, it's a great place to go and work. Um, I have two children, as you can see, Zachary, Zach, who's 17, he's a senior, uh, and Ariana, she likes to be called Ari, she's 15, and she's a junior, so they keep us busy. Um, we're doing the college search right now, so I'm new to that, so a lot to learn. <laughs> um, I At King Philip, I teach the Language Live program, which is a comprehensive literacy program, really uh, working on building those, um, you know, basic re reading and writing skills um, so that they can really catch up to um, their peers, and it's a really successful program. Um, there's great data, students make vast improvement, and it's it's really meant to kind of speed up the gain. So your typical gain in a year, this program really kind of accelerates that gain. Um, it includes from vocabulary to grammar, to reading comprehension, writing, spelling, um, fluency, which is the rate and um, kind of speed um, at which you're reading. So we want students to read naturally and, you know, less stumbling on words. So, you know, it's it's just a very, very good program. I've been teaching it for all 11 years that I've been here. Um, and I also teach the Reading Horizons program, which is a computer-based intervention-focused program. And it's specifically focused on the decoding skills, so breaking down sounds of words um, and letters. It, so it includes modeling, um, we do modeling, we read, dictation where um, the students will read the words back to me, just every, every form and way to um, decipher those words, spelling and more. And this is also a proven program, so I'm very happy to be a part of that as well. Um, and last but certainly not least, I co-teach eighth grade language arts with Miss Carolasia. Um, so I think we make a great team and um, I'm lucky to be in the classroom with your children. And so in general, I would say I, you know, I work with, I, um, with all the teachers on the team to help your children. So I'm kind of that liaison and, um, you know, anyone that's um, struggling, you know, we all work together. So, um, you know, so I'm here for them as well. And it, it's nice to know the content as well as a resource teacher, just what each teacher brings to the table and is um, is teaching. So thank you, and thanks for coming. I'm gonna stop presenting. Perfect, Eva. Maggie, you're up next. All right, thanks, Al. Just had to turn my mic back on. <laughs> All right, hi, everybody. Uh, so my name is Maggie Regan, and I am the uh, Emerald team, oh, wait, hold on, <laughs> the science teacher, but I got to go to present, hold on. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so hopefully you can see everything. It says I'm presenting. So welcome to eighth grade science. Like I said, my name is Maggie Regan and I am the Emerald Team Science Teacher. So the science department mission, so the mission of the secondary science program, so this is six through 12, um, is to educate all students to be scientifically literate and responsible citizens. So the whole secondary department is focused on this and our lessons, our objectives, um, as they go through all the different sciences, again, really six through 12, um, we're all focused and working on, on this mission. Uh, science has adopted, we use uh, what's called the NGSS or the Next Generation Science Standards. We adopted these a few years ago. In eighth grade, um, just so everybody knows as well, um, they do take the eighth grade science test, so they take the NGSS um, in the springtime. But the NGSS is really focused on like a 3D learning model. So it includes the disciplinary core ideas. And so that's the actual content, the material, um, the concepts um, of the science. It also includes the cross-cutting concepts. So those are things like patterns, cause and effect, energy and matter, structure and function. And then it includes science and engineering practices. And so this is sort of what's a little different um, from maybe a science that we're used to. Um, you know, when I took science, we really focused on the scientific method. And so all of our labs, all of our experiments and everything was we always use the scientific method to answer questions. Um, but what the NGSS does is it also includes the engineer design process. So when we do any activity, when we do a lab or an experiment, um, yes, we'll use the scientific method for some of them, um, but we'll also use the engineer design process. There's a few activities that we do this year where the students will build something to solve a problem. We test it, uh, we identify how could we make it better, and then they'll rebuild it and retest it um, and see if they were successful. And so we'll go through that cycle of the engineering design process. So we really do include both as we go through the science year. Um, I took pictures in my room. I know that we're not there, but I thought if people wanted to see <laughs> what this science classroom looked like, um, this is the science classroom. So this is where your students come um, when they come to science class every day. Um, and then I thought I would just take a minute to kind of go through um, what science itself class looks like. Um, so the objective, the homework, um, the agenda for the day and announcements, they're always posted on the front board. Um, what will happen during a typical class is we always start with a warm up or a do now. Um, that could be a review from the lesson before, or maybe it's for me to get a little information about what they already know about a topic topic or to figure out um, some misconceptions that might come up. Um, in fact, today we talked about acceleration and there's a lot of misconceptions with acceleration because we all use the, well, that's just speeding up definition. Um, but in science, it actually gets a little bit um, trickier than that. So we talked about that today. If there's homework, One minute, Meg. Oh, if there's homework, we'll go over homework. Um, Sometimes I do notes, those are always posted on the classroom. Um, so if your student misses a day or uh, misses even part of the notes, they can always get those on classroom. It'll be a Google, a Google um, slideshow. Sometimes we do practice problems. Um, we're a physical science and so there's a lot of calculations and then we always do labs and activities. In fact, this year we've already done five different ones. Um, these are some of the topics we do this year, mass and measurement, force, types of energy, um, we get into chemistry, do structures and properties of matter, electromagnetic radiation. And then the last thing I just wanted to say is if your student is looking for any extra help, um, I am available before school and after school. The only reason I say is by appointment is I'm always there. I just need to know to be in my room, um, but also I'm always available during lab and then even through a Google Meet if we had to do that as well. And then I'm done. Nice wrap up. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Natalia's up next. Hello. Give me one second while I share my screen. All right. Hello. So I am Natalia Pilipishin. I am your child's math teacher. I teach three sections of honors algebra and two sections of mathematics eight. 
This is my first year teaching at King Philip, uh, which is very cool because I'm now, as a KP alum, I'm on the other side of the desk. So I get to do my maiden voyage of my eighth grade teaching career with your kids. So our, we um, are based around the Common Core Standards, so the West Hartford Mathematics Department across town. Uh, we align with the same standards everywhere. Um, we believe in rigor, reasoning, and relevance, mathematical discourse, especially when it comes to students talking about different ways that they solve problems. So I know that sometimes teachers, math teachers, really want students to do um, calculations one way. I'm very open to hearing however my students are thinking and sharing uh, out with the class. Problem solving and working on their self confidence. So trying to kind of build their mathematical identities and not, you know, just be, not being fearful of the subject, helping them to overcome any of those anxieties. I believe that each kid, each student that I have can and will be successful in math. Mistakes are great learning opportunities. I know whenever the students, if they point out that I made a mistake, I'm like, great job. You're paying attention. I love that. So, we definitely like to celebrate those in class. Meeting students where they're at. So I do my best to listen to what is, you know, kind of going on with their learning experiences and to tailor um, my lessons to that. And the main point of, you know, why are they doing all of these, you know, lessons and when are they ever going to use this in real life? I want to equip students with problem solving skills. Yes, they may not be able to recreate this problem 20 years from now. Maybe it's not going to be relevant to them, but what will be relevant is that they are going to be faced with problems every single day and they need to be able to kind of access their resource and being able to think through those problems. Each month they will be given an IXL skill list. And so this is an online program to give students some individual practice time. So usually these skills, they are, they are accompanying what we are learning in class. So it's not a substitute for what we are learning, but it is it, like, it is um, an extra help for them. So if I teach something in class, they may not have as much time to practice that skill right there with me, but this program allows for them to kind of keep sharp on those skills. I assigned the one for this month today, and so October's will be due uh, November 3rd so that they do have a full month to complete it. How to be successful. Uh, utilizing available resources, asking for extra help. Uh, students can set up appointments to meet with me. I'm available during Learning Lab. Um, definitely also encourage students to you know, reach out via email if they want to discuss something. And I do my best to keep the power school uh, up to date so that parents can also see on your end how it is that your students are doing. Homework policy. So homework is for practicing. So I want, I don't want students to spend all night on it. It should be about 15 to 20 minutes. Maybe if it's the honors class, it will probably be closer to 30, um, but that's why some of the assignments are given over multiple days. Students get two exempts per quarter. I know that sometimes things come up, someone's not feeling well, something happens, maybe you just forgot your book in your locker. So then you get two exempts per quarter because life happens. And daily answer keys will be posted. So for example, oops. You've in, got one minute, Natalia. Yeah, okay. In the Google Classroom. So I do like to post, you know, I put the day and the date so that students can easily reaccess. Uh, the material. So for example, you know, on let's see, last Thursday, they can take a look at what it is we did. And then there's an answer key posted and it has the work with it. So that allows students to correct on their own. And then if they are really struggling, then they know to ask for help. All right. Thank you. And that's all that I have for you. And now we're to Wemi. All right. that one sec. All right. Okay, everyone, welcome. 
Uh, my name is Wei Mei Yao. I teach all three seventh grade Chinese classes and also eight two eighth grade Chinese uh, classes that have students from Emerald team and the MCS team. This year, I have uh, 19 uh, students from Emerald team. In our class, we use a lot of technology tools such as uh, Mirpad, GameKit, Quizlet, Add Puzzle to make learning more fun. We also do activities like a group activity, paired activity, songs, acting, um, and art to help students comprehend the target language. Um, next, I would like to share the units of study. Uh, we just completed the unit one. We learned whether students were able to do a weather report. Um, oh, okay, sorry about the number. Unit two, um, we are on unit two right now. This Friday, we will have a quiz on classroom supplies. Uh, next week, we will continue learn school subjects and uh, class schedules. Unit three is a community and the transportation. Students are going to learn the names of the places and also where to get to those places, what transportation tool we can take to those places. And unit four, we're going to learn uh, professions and hobbies. Students are going to learn um, how to name them and uh, in what they want to be uh, in the future. Unit five is a travel unit. We're gonna learn a little bit of new material while we're gonna reveal uh, what we have learned throughout the year. The holiday unit will based on uh, the time of the holiday. We, for example, we just celebrated the Mid-Autumn Festival last month. The coming holiday is Chinese New Year and the Dragon Festival. Um, for the greeting guideline, we're gonna follow the word language greeting guideline. 25% for interpretive language skills, such as reading and the listening. 25% on productive language skill, uh, such as writing and speaking and 35% for content knowledge, include the classwork, quizzes, projects, and 15% for commitment to learning. Uh, we will focus on reading, listening, writing, and speaking throughout the whole year. I think that's it, okay. Thank you so much. All right, well, if that's it, then... Oh, what just happened now? Uh, then I will start. Maggie, I'm going to need you me on track because you know I yap. And yell at me if that's not true. I'll give you one minute. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm going to trust it. that my screen is up. Um, I'm Sally Nye, and I, and I teach U.S. history. Um, I just want to say that, that Natalia, our math teacher, uh, was one of my students, so I'm feeling particularly old this year. Uh, but I've been at KP forever. It's my 22nd year, uh, all at KP. Um, and so your kids with me this year are doing something a little bit different. Uh, sixth and seventh grade really focus on geography. Eighth grade is really a history um, year. So you can see the topics uh, that are up there. We're basically going from the colonial period to reconstruction after the Civil War. Uh, we've actually just started our um, slavery in New England um, project. So that's what that's what we're in the middle of uh, right now. Um, skills that we're working on. Uh, we will do some research skills. We do a lot with analytical thinking, uh, asking good questions, reading primary source documents, uh, and recognizing cause and effect. Uh, one of the big things I'm going to bring in this year, a new focus on, is um, looking at different perspectives. Um, so not just looking at things from one point of view, but looking at things from multiple point of views uh, in order to build um, some empathy and some long-term uh, recognition of, of um, that, that issues are not necessarily solved overnight. They 
can take a long time to build up and then they can take a long time to solve. So um, one thing I do want to talk about is the Witness Stones project. If you have uh, an older sibling in the last two or three years, you may know about this already, but um, this is our third or fourth year of doing it in the entire eighth grade across West Hartford um, takes on uh, this project. We are doing the background work on slavery in New England right now. Uh, next week, we'll start the Witness Jones Project. And we're really fortunate to work with a couple of retired uh, teachers and a retired library media person in the district um, who have done a lot of research um, into uh, slavery right in West Hartford. And so they have gathered documents for us because they're difficult you know, for kids to, to get together and to find. And so the kids will be looking at primary sources like we, uh, we wills, deeds of sale, um, uh, lists of inventories. Um, and what that reveals is that, you know, there were quite a few enslaved people in West Hartford in the 16 and 1700s. Um, so we will be taking on um, the person and, uh, working our way through the documents that we have in order to try to find out what we can about this person's life. Uh, the kids will do a project on it. The project is open to many, many different options. There's creative options, um, writing songs and poems. Um, there's designing memorials. You can make videos about your learning. You can write articles. Uh, last year, we had several students present to the um, uh, the uh, town board about changing a street name um, to uh, recognize uh, someone who was enslaved. And then what you see in the picture is um, is uh, prototypes of the stones that are made for each person that we study. And they are, um, we work on them throughout the year, we decide what's going to go on the stones, and then they're put into the um, cemetery in uh, uh, on North Main Street, the old center cemetery. Um, so we um, and last thing I want to talk about is we do do a, a major research project every year. It takes about seven weeks. Uh, we call it the NHD project. This year our topic is debate and diplomacy. Um, kids will choose a topic that they're interested in. So we'll spend several days looking at possible things. That's not going to happen for a couple of months. So that won't come up. Uh, for a little while. Uh, eventually, they will produce either a video, a web page, or a paper uh, presenting their work. Um, I know it, it sounds overwhelming, and when you look at the screen, uh, I just want you to know this work is broken down really into day by day what everybody should be working on um, at that time. Just and thank you. Um, we usually get really into it. Um, end of February, beginning of March, it's all wrapped up by the April break. Um, when we get there, please, 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 parents, if you have questions, don't hesitate to email me. Um, and then most importantly, really what I wanna say to you is, um, I just hope, let me go back here, that you know, I, I wanna help your kids become lifelong learners and, and active and responsible citizens. So that is my real goal. Um, and to do a, lo a lot of work on disagreeing and being polite when we disagree. So um, please, if you have any questions about what we're doing or have any concerns, please don't hesitate to um, give me an email and hopefully we'll have a great year. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, somebody needs to mute. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put the link for our, um, Presentation, you'll see that there's the end of. I think somebody needs to mute, but is it muted? Okay, you'll see towards the end of it, there is um, the Google form for you to fill out if you would like to tell us something, um, you know, about your child that you think we should know that's important. And then you'll also see at the end, the last couple slides, the link to the UA open house um, where they're going to um, answer questions. We'll stay here. We're going to be in this meet for the next 20 minutes. So if you have any questions, if you're not receiving the newsletter, if there's something that you know we can help with or answer for you, all of the Emerald team teachers will be here for the rest of um, the open house time slot to just answer your questions and help you. 
Um, but you can also, if you don't have any questions, I'm sure the UA teachers would love to see some of you also join their meet um, if you have any questions for them um, at this time.